Okay, we will start then. Uh, a request to all, uh, if you have any questions, queries, do unmute yourself and uh, first tell your name so that we also come to know who he is asking the question and also we will come to know each other, about each other. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, welcome all. I am Siddhish uh, and uh, today together we are going to implement a very basic cloud application using two of the top, uh, popular technologies these days, Angular and Web API. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Sanjay sir, Irind here, uh, who is uh, uh, taking care of administrative stuff here and the whole Texter community for allowing me to uh, conduct this mint session. Uh, if you are interested in any uh, such mint session, uh, these are amazing sessions conducted by Inner you know, Dave Sir, Shiv Koirala Sir, who we have been uh, uh, considering as gurus in our uh, entire career and journey. So these people, amazing people are conducting some free sessions as a mint series on the textures community. You can join the Telegram group available. You can just Google it and join it there for taking advantage of the further session itself. So today what we are going to do is take a use case. We'll discuss about the architecture of it, what technologies we can use to implement it. And for today we are going to use Angular and Web API to implement this case study. Now the focus for today's session is not the technology, but we will under, try to understand what are the steps needed, what are the principles required to implement basic application uh, using all the CRUD operations. I suppose you have the setup ready. Today's use case is about a product management system. The client application or the client side, we will allow user to perform four actions, list the product, create, update, delete the product. And this client application will talk to an API on the server side. This API will use some library for database operation. And the actual data will be stored on a database. Uh, so this is a kind of a diagram which talks about the UI side. Now, for each of these layers, I'm just talking about uh, UI, server side, that is API, as well as the database. You can use different technologies itself. Now, on client side or UI side, we can choose any JavaScript like such as Angular here, or uh, I can use, if I'm in .NET stack, I will use ASP.NET MVC or web forms and so on. If I'm on Java stack, I can use the JSP and so on, or in some other programming language. It may not be even web application, it could be desktop application or console application and so on. The middle part is the API. So the client application will talk to an API. Now again, there are host of uh, options to implement this API in .NET, Java and so on. In .NET, we can use uh, web API or web services, web API will use HTTP methods, HTTP works for performing all the CRUD operations, whereas web services will be so page. Even if you are in Java world, you can use Spring Boot to implement the RESTful API. So today we are going to focus on the RESTful API itself. Client application will call a particular RESTful API on the server side, and in the particular method on the API, they will use a library, uh, specifically an ORM tool, to perform the actual database operation. Uh, on database side, you can use any IDB system. Today, we are going to use SQL Server. If you search for any uh, on the Google for Angular architecture diagram, this is the typical diagram you will see. It talks about what is the overall architecture what are the different components or parts of the architecture and how they are associated with each other. So I have just taken it to a further step and identified uh, what is the, what are the different pieces and how do they fit together. 
So at the root of the base level is something known as a module. I'm talking of Angular architecture here. So base of every Angular application is a module. Module is nothing but a container which can house or which can contain other architecture pieces or components of an Angular application. There is a default uh, module called as app module, which will be considered as a bootstrap or a starting module when the application starts up. I can add one or more modules to the same Angular application. First important uh, architecture piece is called as component. The default component is app component. So when the application starts, default module that is app module is started. So app module it will tell us which is the bootstrap component or the starting component. Uh, it is by default app component. I can add more user defined components. A component has three parts. One is called as template. Template is a HTML which will be used to display a view. And the second is the class. We will implement the component class as a type using TypeScript programming language. It can contain two parts, properties and methods. Properties will hold the data. Methods will contain some logic. And if you see these two parts, there are two things, property binding and event binding. So the class will contain the properties and methods, and we need to associate them with the HTML, right? So we will use uh, properties to hold the data and in order to bind it to the uh, form elements or HTML elements, we will uh, do them via property binding. And whenever there is an event card from the UI, for example, user will click on a button. When user clicks on a button, click event is fired, then one of the methods within that class will have to be called. So these are known as property bindings and event binding. The third and most important is part of a component is metadata. Metadata is uh, will tell us what this class is about, whether it's a component, it's a module, it's a directory, or what it is, and add some extra information to that class. Metadata is always implemented using decorator as you will see later. Second architecture piece of Angular architecture is known as directive. Directive is similar to template uh, component, but it has no template. Third is service. Service is just another class, but it will uh, uh, it will be uh, injected with a uh, class called HTTP client. HTTP client is a class used to interact with the API using get, put, post, and delete HTTP works as methods. We are going to use here dependency injection via constructor. You will see in the demo itself. Next is for navigation, we will use something known as routing. Uh, you are not speaking, please unmute yourself. Or if you have questions, I will give some time later on. But let us finish up with the presentation. Next is navigation. If we want to navigate from one URL to the next URL, we will use the inbuilt routing module that is provided by Angular itself. Next is, uh, yes, sir. Some problem. Okay, so next architecture piece is pipes. Pipes are special classes which are used to transform data from one format to another format. For example, date conversions. Uh, if I have a string, I want to convert to uppercase, lowercase, currency conversion, percentage, and so on. These are the inbuilt types. You can also create your own user defined types. So this is just to give you a very high level of what an Angular is about. About there are many many apart from this there are many many other aspects of Angular. We are not going to deep dive into Angular or API here or into any technology, but we are going to uh, as per the use case requirement, we are going to learn a few things to implement the basic cross operation itself. 
Next, we are going to use Angular's command line interface. These are some of the commands which we will use to create, build, and run the Angular application. We can also use these commands to generate or create component, directive, or other architectural pieces, which we will see in the demo itself. Angular is a single page application framework from Google. There is only one HTML page available or present in the entire application that is index.html and rest of the uh, components there is and it, it also follows some kind of a MVC or uh, MVC architecture wherein only the views are being changed only one HTML but as we uh, navigate from one route to another route or one URL to another URL only the view of that component will be changed on that HTML file. The root module is the app module. I can have more than one app module also. And inside each module, I can have one or more components, one or more services, one or more classes, and so on. This is again same thing that we discussed in a couple of slides back. A component will contain class which we will implement using TypeScript, it will have a template, which we will implement using HTML, and metadata, which will be implemented using decorator. Those who have worked in Java will be able to relate to this. This decorator or metadata is implemented as an annotation that is similar to what we do in Java itself. We will understand about this when we go to the demo itself. So, there are two important files here. One is the index.html which we have already discussed about. The second important file is the main.ts file. TS stands for TypeScript. TypeScript is a programming language or a, uh, you could say, a object-oriented JavaScript language itself. Main.ts file contains the main entry point of our application. It will tell us which is the starting module or the bootstrap module. Generally, it is app module. Once we know the starting module, we can go to that module class and we can identify which is the bootstrap or starting component. Once we identify that, then from there we can go from one component to the next component using route. Uh, again, we will talk about uh, one more file back into JSON. We will make some changes there itself. Style will contain all the CSS at the uh, whole application level. Also, you can apply some style specific to a component as we will see later on. Okay, so now I hope everybody has got idea of what the use case is, how we are going to implement it, and so let's get our hands dirty. Okay? Now, any questions? Please unmute yourself or you can ask and check. Okay, I don't see any questions here. Moving to the actual demo. I have already created the whole application, but again, we will be going step by step. This is what the final application will look like. At the top, there will be navigation items. You can navigate to list of the product, or uh, you can click on add product to add a new product. Uh, and the list of the product will be displaying a tabular structure itself to display details about the product, information about the product, plus also you can take two actions to update and delete it. I can click on delete and it will give me a JavaScript alert or a pop-up to confirm whether I want to really delete. If I say cancel, I'll be on the same uh, UI. If I click on OK, it will be deleted. Okay, product is deleted. I get the, all the confirmation of whatever action is being done. And you can see that the product is removed from the list also. Also, I can go to add product. And notice that if I don't enter any values, all the validations are in place. Notice that today's date is already populated as a default date. 
I can go back to the list again. I can go to update part and whichever product item I have clicked on, I'll be able to fetch the details from the API, populate in the UI, and also notice that if I'm not giving uh, correct or valid values, all the validations are also working on the update or edit part also. Again, I can go back to the list, and these are the main actions we are going to implement. So I hope everybody has got visually what we our final application will look like. Any questions here? Okay, great. Uh, so now we will start implementing our use case. Let me go back and okay. So now what we will do is we will implement the server side API. Now as I said earlier, I am going to use that API which is based on Docker framework. If you are in Java world or some other programming language you are using, you can use implement the RESTful API in the programming language itself. Okay, and also we will create the database automatically using a ORM tool called Entity Framework that we will see in the demo itself. So open Visual Studio, not Visual Studio Core. I'm talking of full Visual Studio. Go to File, create a new project. You can use 2015, uh, 2017, or 2019, any addition. Create a new project. I have already created a folder for Mint session today. I'm, I'm using Visual Studio 2019. This pop-up for creating new project is different if you are using 2015 or 2017 version of Visual Studio. What you have to look for is web API, a template for creating a web project. Let me highlight the template that we should be using. Notice that it is using C sharp and ASP.NET web application which targets .NET framework. If you have used, if you have installed .NET Core, then you will get a separate template for .NET Core also. But here, I want to use a template which is called as ASP.NET web application targeting .NET framework and using C Sharp language. I hope this is clear. Uh, if you have any doubt or if you are stuck somewhere, please unmute yourself and read your query there and there itself. Okay, once I get the template, click on next. I'll give a project name here. I'll call it as product API. Let me type this. Product API into a required folder. And I'm using the latest framework. Click on next, create. You will again get a pop up. In this pop up, you have to choose web API, new authentication, configure for HTTPS should be checked, and then you can click create.
I hope everybody has got the required template. I'm going to click on create now. And this will be a batch API project that will be created. Now in this, I'm going to use an ORM tool called Entity Framework. I can also use other ORM tools. This ORM tool is from Microsoft itself. It has a, a different approaches like database first, code first. Meaning, if I already have the database created, I can use the database first approach to create the required model classes. Now, this web API is based on uh, MVC framework, model view controller. Again, this is an API, right? So there will be no view, but there will be model which will be used for storing the data and also they will be interfacing with the table data that is stored in the database. And controller will be the actual class which will handle all user actions. Now this controller class will contain methods for all HTTP verbs. For example, when I call a specific, call the page API, it will call I can call it using get, put, post, or delete action, HTTP action. We will see this together in the, once the project is created. It's taking a bit of time, so we'll wait for it to complete. In the meantime, if anybody has questions, queries, confusion, you can ask. Yes. Yes, any question? Uh, Neeraj is saying, uh, why the API is saying any system? Uh, Neeraj, we will create the whole Angular project together. I'll be walking you through the code itself, so don't worry about it. Uh, I don't know why it's taking time. Uh, okay, in the meantime, let's create the Angular project also then. A bit of time. So what I will do is I will go to Visual Studio Code. Okay, Sharad is asking uh, why uh, Postman can be used. Again, I have just listed it there. We can test it for uh, all the actions. Uh, Postman is a very lightweight and very uh, useful tool to test the uh, RESTful API uh, and it is used uh, by many enterprises itself uh, and when you go to, okay, whatever tools we are using today, these are the, uh, these are some of the tools or the technologies which are generally asked for during interviews. Uh, because when you say the APIs, RESTful APIs, you will be generally asked whether you have worked with Postman tool itself or not. Of course, Fiddler and other tools can be used, but Postman is very intuitive. Uh, Neeraj, uh, my screen is shared. Hope everybody can see my shared screen. I'm on Video Studio Code. 
Anybody not able to see my screen? Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Uh, my screen is shared. I'm on Visual Studio Code. Is everybody able to see? Uh, Sharath, you had a question regarding Postman. Did you get the answer? Okay, uh, you can just confirm. Uh, Sharath, did you get your answer? Oh, uh, maybe I was on mute. Uh, please uh, tell me if I go on mute. Somehow I went on mute. Okay, so you had a question regarding Postman. Okay, Postman is one of the tools to test the REST APIs. Of course, you can use Fiddler and all, but Postman is very intuitive and generally nowadays used by many organizations. So generally, whenever you go for any interviews, you will definitely be asked about Postman tool usage. And it gives a good details uh, on the resume also if you are working with this API. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Okay, so let me go back to the Visual Studio. Internet, yes, we will need VS Code because the Angular project will be created within VS Code itself. So let me go back to the Visual Studio. Now we should be able to see that if you open the Solution Explorer, the whole project will be created. Okay, let me expand a few things here to then zoom in. Okay, now if you go to the Solution Explorer, I hope everybody is able to create this project. Under App Start, you will be able to see Web API config. This is where the routing information and the template and everything is stored. Uh, also, there will be one problem later on when we try to call from Angular application to this API, and we will have to come here and fix it. Uh, controllers is a folder wherein we will create the controller classes, and they will be handling all the user inputs. Models will be the folder under which we will create our model classes for this application. Also, there is a configuration file uh, called web.config which will, in which we will store the connection string to connect to the database. So these are the files which we are going to make use of. Now before I go forward, let me reiterate the steps here. So we created the web API project, then we will use entity framework for first approach to create something known as db context. Once it is created, we will go to web.config and update the connection string. Once that is done, I will add required model classes. I will go back to the db context class and add something known as db set property. Once I do that, finally I will create the controller class. So these are going to be my steps. So let's start with the, we have already created the web API project. Next we will create the entity framework. Uh, we will use code first approach to create the db context. Now right click on models folder. Remember that uh, Entity Framework is a ORM tool, okay, so we will see it, click on new item, right click on model, add new item, uh, 
can we yes we can use video studio as well uh, for uh, creating the angular project but if you use video studio then yeah, 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 the whole angular project will be created based on dotnet framework or dotnet code so if you don't want to create an angular based on a dotnet environment uh, but rather to stand on an angular itself application itself so that is why i will be preferring visual studio code here of course you can use visual studio to create the uh, angular project also go to data and use adio.net mtt data model go to data and adio.net mtt data model did you find the template? Sir, I suppose everyone got this ADO.NET entity data model. In the name, type it as product context. In the name as product context, you can add, it will give you a pop-up. Now, in entity framework, there are different approaches to create the database. The first is, you can create a database, uh, or you can create the model classes and the database. There are different approaches. One is, first is, if you have three existing database created, you can use the first approach. But we are going to use the third approach in which we will create the model classes first and automatically the database table, database and the database table will be generated for you. So you don't have to create the database explicitly. Select the third template. This is known as entity framework code first approach in which you never create the database or by going to the database server. Wait for some time for it to finish. Uh, Sharad is asking, yes, we are doing entity framework code first approach here. Uh, Shubham is asking how to connect with other databases other than the local one. Uh, Shubham, I will show you that point where you can connect to either local database or any other database on the network which you have access. I will show you that connection soon part. Okay, once this entity framework code first approach support you add there will be one class added you have given it a name as product context notice the it is deriving from something known as db context now let me tell you one more other thing this db context is going to perform all the database actions that is connecting to the database performing the any other DML operation uh, like add, uh, delete, select, and so on, and uh, it will be going to disconnect uh, automatically and without me having to write any SQL query, I will never be writing select or update insert query here. This is the beauty of using ORM tool. Using ORM tool, you will get a DB context or some class object which will perform the actual database action or database operation on your behalf in, in spite of you writing or instead of you writing those queries. 
Now this class has a constructor and there is a name being passed here. This name refers to the connection string that will be stored in web.config. Now we will go to the web.config file, identify that connection string which will be at the end of the connection uh, of the configuration file. You will see a connection string here. And this is where you can point to any of your database. Has everyone got the web.config? Okay, uh, if you are stuck somewhere or if, it is, if you are not able to get to the required point, please flag that and there it says. Okay, it has got three parts, connection string, data source, meaning which database server. I'm going to use the local one. I have SQL Server Management Studio already open here. If I go to the connect to server window, I can see which is the server, right, dot here. And I'm going to use Windows authentication. You can, of course, use uh, SQL Server authentication also. Initial catalog refers to the database, name of the database. I'm going to change the default one to product db. I will keep integrated security equal to true if I am using Windows authentication. If you are using SQL Server authentication, then you will have login and password here. If that is the case, then instead of integrated security, let me take this to so this is first is the connection stream for those who are using integrated security or Windows authentication. The second one is for those who are using SQL Server authentication, you need to use user ID equal to whatever is the user ID. I'm putting a placeholder there and password equal to whatever is your password. Again, let me go back. In the connection string, I have three parts, data source, server name, initial catalog, a new database name, and third part will be dependent on what is your authentication type to the SQL uh, server. Windows authentication, then use integrated security equal to true. If you are using SQL server authentication, use the second connection string which is highlighted on the screen. Uh, I hope everybody has got the connection string correct. Okay, please remember this step because if you are going to create a black API, so then you will have to follow the similar steps here. Now let me go to models folder and add a product model class here. Product is our base model for this application. Go to models folder, right click, add class. I'll give a name as product. Create the class called product. This folder it is hand.
Okay, this product is a model class which will act as a or which will be equivalent to the database table. For every column in the table, I will have an associative property. Now, look at this trick here. I need to add property which will act as columns in my table once the database table is generated. I'm going to use a shortcut here called top. Press tab two times and we will be able to generate property. Property meaning of property is public field in a class. So the model classes will only contain properties. Integer ID. That's it. Okay, if you have questions, please speak. Drop, tab, tab. Next property is name, whose type is string. I'm just pressing tab and enter. One more property for size, whose data type is decimal. Price, enter. Next is create a date. This data type will be date time. And last one is a category. Uh, for simplicity's purpose, I'm taking it as a string. But in actual enterprise application, you would be taking it as a different model itself, and you would have mapping between category and product. Because in database, you will have category table, product table. One product can belong to one category. One category can have one or more products, the association between the two. So this is how you will have to. So this is all part of the domain driven development or design if you have heard of. Uh, but again this is not an architecture session. Uh, but just to give you an idea of how the things actually play out and you can go to uh, enterprise application. So this is a very basic model I have created. Just five properties. Uh, I hope everyone has completed this part. Now we will go to product context and in this context class, we have to associate all the models with our DB context. For the association, we add something known as DB set property. DB set or product. I'll call this product. So this will be going to the collection of products which will be this property will be used by this db context class to perform the actual current operations on the product table. I hope this is clear. Okay, great. Next step. Okay, now we have created the model. We have created the DB context. And the final step will be to create a controller which will allow us to perform all the current operations on this particular API. Go to controllers folder, right click, add, uh, we should get controller here, but no. So let's build the project.
Make sure everyone build the project, otherwise we will get error later on. Yes, Sharad is asking whether name of the table in the database will be product or not. Yes. Uh, when we create the model classes, we should use the singular name of the model classes. Uh, by default, entity framework, when, the, uh, when it will generate the table, it will pluralize them. Because table contains multiple rows, there is a class which is a single object, right? Uh, that is the thought behind giving this naming convention. Okay, I can see that build is successful. Let me now go to the controller folder and try to add. Uh, I'm not getting an option or adding a controller. So what I will do is I will close the video studio. If I'm not getting the option to add a controller, you should close your Visual Studio. Reopen open it again. Uh, can we, uh, Ajit is asking, can we give some variable like ABC instead of product? Uh, if you are asking the in the product context class, uh, yes, in the context class you can give any name to that property of DB set, but uh, it is recommended that you give plural names and which talk uh, or which tells you which model is it talking about. If you give some generic names or different names than the actual model class, then it will be difficult for you to associate and identify if there are too many model classes present in your application. Uh, I hope that gives you perspective of why it is very important to give proper names, use uh, proper naming conventions. Of course, when we talk of uh, oops, we also talk of solid principles and the, and the associated principles, right? They are to make your life, developer's life easy and also from maintenance perspective, if you write uh, code following all the principles, then it becomes easier for the developers from maintenance perspective in future. Okay, now I am able to reopen it. I will go to Solution Explorer, Controllers, right click, Add, and I should see an option to add a controller there. Uh oh, some problem. Okay, let me. Okay. Uh, actually, you will see a controller option, but I'm, I already have an option called Web API Controller. I will use that and I will call it as product controller, but it will not give me scaffolding feature. Now, when I say scaffolding, uh, this Visual Studio has a feature called scaffolding, which allows you to automatically generate the entire code of that, all the current operation for that controller. I'm not able to get that option. Oh, okay, now I'm able to see the option. Right click on controllers, yes. Make sure you right click on controller, add, and can you see an option for controller? Use that option called controller, and it will give you a nice pop-up. Now this is known as scaffolding. Scaffolding meaning you will use the model class to automatically generate the crowd code for the crowd operation. Now I will use the one two three four step template web API controller with actions using entity framework. Since I'm using entity framework for database operation, click on add. 
Uh, I hope everyone is able to get this option. You will get another pop-up to choose the model class. You can choose uh, the model class called product, which you have already done. Data context class, you have only one, product context. And notice that the name of the controller is automatically inferred from the name of the model class. Everybody get the, got the options? Click on add. And Visual Studio is going to use a technique known as scaffolding. What this does is, using the model class properties, it will generate the ready-made code for the CRUD operation. Any questions so far? Yes, Sharad. Uh, Sharad has a question. Uh, is this the web API controller we are adding here? Yes. If we um, noted while adding the controller, there were around 89 options. First three are for the ASP.NET MVC, but we have to use a web API controller. The products controller class is created. We have to first make sure that it derives from API controller and not just controller. If it is just a controller, delete that controller and re-generate it again. Secondly, it has already created a object for product context. And if you notice, there are Already methods for get product with ID, get all the products, post a product for creating a product, put a product for editing, delete a product for deleting. All these actions are automatically implemented. And let me put a breakpoint in the get products method, which actually returns a collection of products itself. And if you look at the syntax, if you search for anywhere, you will not find any SQL queries. But this db.products will internally translate to select from product page. This will internally create the select query. But nowhere you will find any queries which you either manually return or automatically also, then you will not find any queries. That's the beauty of ORM. Now run your project. You can press F5. Run the project. In the meantime, open Postman tool also. We will do the testing. Also open SQL Server Manager Studio and we should be checking for the product DB database. Okay, now if you look at the URL, 
I'm running the API project and uh, can we do dependency injection of uh, Ajay is asking can we do dependency injection of product composition controller? Yes, actually that's the correct architecture. Uh, you can use repository pattern. Uh, you can do dependency use dependency injection uh, for the product content as well as other uh, uh, dependencies uh, for the controller as well as other aspects. Uh, that would be the correct architecture of the whole application. But we are not focusing on the architecture here because we have to quickly finish this API and go to the Angular project. We are already one hour done here. Okay, so we will not focus on the architecture part in this session. Open the Postman tool. Let the project be done here. Uh, we have to wait for this method to be hit. Okay, let me show you one more thing uh, which we will be which will be required. Go to the app start web API config and under this we will find the uh, default route configuration for this API project. Now those who are already aware of MDC kind of structure, the route pattern is controller slash action method slash ID, right? That is the, for the MVC project. But since we are talking of API here, there is no view for the specification action method involved. Uh, we will be using the uh, route template or pattern as API slash name of the controller. I can have one or more controllers in this project and an optional ID. Now, how will it identify? This is the question. If I call a API slash product, how will it identify which method in the product controller to be called? Uh, Sharon is saying generic repository pattern plus dependency injection implementation next can be great. Yes, of course, there was already a session by uh, Jia. Uh, who is an amazing architect. Uh, he already conducted two sessions uh, based on this uh, repository pattern and unit of working, uh, unit of work. So, uh, if required, we can have that kind of session also. But again, we will be uh, moving, uh, we will have to focus on the architecture part. That's it. Uh, it's a bit slow. If you are already running it, okay, great. So the base URL, I will have to change it to API slash products. Now I had a question. If I go to this URL, how will it know which method to call? If you notice, get product is called. So by default, whenever we are calling a particular API from the browser, it is the get HTTP work being used. Let me press F10, press F5, and we will wait for the result. In the meantime, you can go to the SQL Server Management Studio and see whether product DB is database is created or not. We will wait for the response. We don't have any uh, data. Uh, again, Entity Framework also allows us to add seed data. If you have heard of this terminology, you can seed the database itself when the database and the tables are being created for the first time. Now, if you notice, we have got the response. Uh, and there is no data. That's fine. Let me go to SQL Server Management Studio. And I can see a product DB being created. If I expand the table, I should be able to see products table here. Let me write a query. Uh, 
making the database select third from product oh sorry products and notice that the table is generated no data now my next question i want to add a data using the controller method the method that will be used is post product this method will be used now tell me how to invoke this method Uh, this is a question for everyone. Tell me how can I post data? Can I post it from browser? Uh, Amar is saying Postman. Yes, of course you have to use Postman or some kind of a tool which will allow us to uh, perform the post operation. From the browser we cannot, uh, of course we can do it using developer tools and all. But Postman is a very nice uh, tool for this action. So what I'm going to do is I will use put a breakpoint everyone in the post product method. Uh, we will understand a bit about this method implementation also at the same time. Let me copy the URL. Go to the Postman. Uh, Postman is a nice tool for testing your API. You can add, I have added this uh, URL here and if you see on the left hand side, I have a get action, right? I will change it to post action. I want to create a product. Let me click on send button and see whether the actual method is being hit or not. Yes. The method is being hit, right? Now, let me, I have put a breakpoint, so I have paused the execution. Now, let me take my mouse to the product parameter. This is the parameter which is going to expect some data from whenever you are trying to post to the, uh, post to the controller. Now, this is null, right? Now, if I just go ahead, model validation is successful, I should get a runtime error. Now, what is the problem? The problem is I should not allow, there is first problem, I should not allow a null object to be added. It has to be filtered before. And secondly, if you go to the product, there is one, there are few more problems that none of the fields are mandatory. The only thing is ID by convention is added as a primary key. Let me go to the database table, columns, and if you look at ID, it is added as a primary key with auto increment, with identity, uh, but other fields are all nullable, uh, specifically name, others are not null by default. But I also want name to be a required or mandatory field. Now, the problem is we have to add the, uh, we have to add some constraints, right? Now, how to add constraints? If you are from Java world, you can add annotation, uh, if you have heard of it. Here we add something known as data annotation. Now, for this to work, uh, Actually, we are changing the schema here, right? We'll make the name uh, property mandatory. What I'm going to do is, I will drop this database from the SQL Server Management Studio. Everyone, delete this database now. Come to the product class. I will add annotations. Okay. Image required. Press control dot. And it will give you suggestions to import or fix the 
Uh, I suspect we will have very less time uh, for Angular to finish. Okay, the question says control dot. I'm waiting. Okay, what it will do is it will allow us to import the required uh, package as well as required namespace uh, of data annotations. So it's taking too much time. In the meantime, please import this namespace, apply it to all things. And also, I can specify string length. Maximum length uh, would be 50. Correct. Okay, add these data annotations to everything except ID because ID is by default considered by convention as primary. Oh, it's taking too much time. Let me close and open again. Okay, in the meantime, by the time it gets set up, uh, let's go to Visual Studio Code and create our new Angular project. So, after we are done with the testing of the API, we will be creating a new Angular application, right? So, we are going to use Angular CLI command for this. And the command would be ng new and the name of the project. So, everyone go to the Visual Studio Code. Uh, go to the folder. Uh, you can create a folder for yourself and go to the folder. So, let me go back. Uh, let me close a few things. Okay, so this is open. Let me build it from Visual Studio. Okay, we will under Terminal, okay, in Visual Studio Code, we can view or go to Terminal. You can also use Control Stick. You can type command ng 
Good morning. I will call it as product app. This will take uh, uh, some time as uh, okay. This is the command you have to type on the terminal. Either you can use terminal or you can use command prompt also. NG new product app. Press enter. It will ask you two questions. One is whether you want to add support for routing. You will choose yes. And second, to choose which, uh, which CSS style you want to use. I'll say routing yes and you can scroll up, scroll down to choose the CSS framework. I'm going to use normal CSS. Press enter and it will take few minutes to download all the required packages depending on your internet connection. In the meantime, we will go to the Okay, so let me see if I can add. Go to Visual Studio. Let me add to, I need to import the required namespace here. Okay, any questions so far? Um, your studio has hang. Uh, okay, uh, guys, we'll take a two minute break here uh, and then we will continue. Let me, in the meantime, uh, I will check what's the problem with your studio. Okay, so I'm going to pause. Uh, we'll continue after two minutes.
This hope you are not uh, explaining anything. You are on mute, I think. Yes, I am done. Yes. Uh, we will start. Uh, Neeraj is saying the uh, if we have a pre-based uh, Yes, this is the last step. Uh, we will do and uh, we will do this on the web API and then we will go back to the uh, Angular part. So let me input the required name namespace for the required attribute. Uh, and machine has become very slow. Uh, Nitin is saying ng space, uh, ng space new, Nitin ng new and the new. ng other angular commands. It is installing the packages. I uh, hope everyone is able to see my screen. Our Angular application is being created. Okay. Uh, thanks. Uh, Nitin, you can just check. Okay. Now I have able to add the namespace. Okay. Let me build the project again. Uh, I think we will have to do the uh, Angular will also take some time, so we might have to do another session later on. Uh, Angular routing meeting, you have to choose yes, and you have to select CSS as the CSS framework. Now, Web API is created successfully. I'm going to run it from Visual Studio. I'm going to go back to the Postman. I have the correct URL. I have chosen the HTTP web as post. I will go to body. I will choose X www form URL encoded. This means that I'm sending the data in the uh, required format. Uh, Yes, uh, within the, we'll see how it goes. Uh, first, let me finish up with the API. Okay, and I will add a few things here, like name. I'll see product one. Next is Price. Price has to be a number. So let's say 100 rupees. Next is created date. Uh, in the format 2020. Uh, April 2nd. Uh, Category again is a string. So I could give any category like books. Uh, from the UI, we will have generally have a selection, right, uh, for the category. So these are the values. I'm going to pass for the product. Now notice that the name of the each property should match with the property of the model. Otherwise. It will be validation error. And let me click on send. We have already put a breakpoint in the post product method. That breakpoint should be hit. So 
Angular project is also being created side by side. Let me wait for this method to be called. Uh, any questions in the meantime? Uh, Amar is asking uh, which format should be selected in Postman. Uh, which format means? Uh, Amar, I didn't get your question. Oh, the form URL encoded means, uh, okay, uh, now, okay, now let me go to the, see this product, if you notice, uh, again, uh, we are not talking, uh, we haven't talked much about the API, API implementation itself will be a session, uh, if you want to deep dive into it. Now, this product is a complex type, okay, and this complex type will come from the body, okay, and not from the parameter. So that's why I have chosen body here. And if uh, I'm passing it, I want to pass this data as a uh, key value pass. So the key will be the name of the property, and this value will be the actual value associated with that. So if I go to bulk action, this will be passed as a kind of a JSON object. Right? So this JSON object will be mapped to this product uh, model class. If I am using the uh, form URL encoding, uh, if I choose form data, uh, I don't think so. It is passed as uh, as a JSON, and that is why it will not be uh, accepted by this method itself. On the validations, if, uh, I hope that answers your question. Uh, the validation has been passed. Let me see if it is able to add. Uh, unfortunately, my machine has become very slow. Uh, so this is the only action we are going to test from API, and then we will move to the uh, Angular project. Uh, hopefully, the Angular project is ready. Okay, let me press that So it is successfully created. Uh, if you see the response here, it is 201. The time taken, size, and so forth. Means it is successfully created, and this is the details of the product that has been added to the database. Now, if I go back and go to the actual URL, slash API, slash product. It is calling the get product method and we should be able to see the actual product being stored in the data. Okay, so this is how you can use Postman to test other actions also. Okay, so now I'm going to close Postman. Uh, Angular is installing the packages. So, uh, let me see product app has been created. So let me use Visual Studio Open folder. I'm going to open the folder for this. Uh, 
so hopefully everyone got how to create uh, the API, uh, how to test it, how to make sure that all the validations are also put on the model, a few things, key important points. Okay, so let me be on the terminal part. If it has finished, creating the project. Um, okay. Okay, this has not installed the required packages. Okay, so let's go quickly through this. So open package of JSON. Here, make a change on line number six. ng serve space hyphen o. It is not zero hyphen o. Now we are in Visual Studio Code. This is our Angular application. Okay. These are the, on the left hand side what you see are the npm commands that are to be associated with the right hand side ng command. ng refers to angular CLI command. So when we are, I will type npm start, I will be actually calling ng serve uh, hyphen o or double hyphen open refers to serve so means build and run. But at the same time open meaning you will open the base URL in the browser. Okay. If you don't put hyphen O, it will not open it in the browser. So this is first thing. Second, I will go to SRC, go to main.ph, main.ph is the main entry point for your application. This will tell you which is the bootstrap module, app module, click on F12. We will go to the definition of app module class. App module is by default a bootstrap module. I can also create more than one other module also. Uh -oh, it's taking some time. Let me go to the actual module. This is my module. This is a class. And notice that this at the rate ng module, this is the decorator or metadata using at the rate. So this class will be designated as a module in Angular application. Now it has few sections. Uh, first is declaration. Declarations will tell you the component generative files that belong to the current module. Okay, they, they will be registered as declarations in the for this module. Import meaning I want to import external modules into this module. So if you are working on uh, Java, this is like importing the packages. If you are working on .NET, importing the pack, uh, node package, uh, sorry, uh, what is that? Nugget packages or importing the namespaces, something like that. Provider says if I have services that I want to inject. Someone mentioned about dependency injection, right? I will, I have a service and I want to inject it as a dependency. In our case, we are going to inject as a dependency uh, using uh, dependency using uh, DI, uh, is your constructor first, constructor injection. And the last is bootstrap. This will tell you which, on array itself, which are the starting components or which will be the component which will be uh, used for starting this application. Okay, next, uh, in the speed of time, in the meantime, let me do one thing. Uh, test. So let me copy the modules, otherwise it will take a lot of time.
let me go to the actual folder and folder. let me match it okay we go to the terminal okay so let me put the packages there okay now we will go to the app component ts file we change the title to tms product management system remember app component is our bootstrap component go to the template oh, i can write here H1. Uh, generally, we write hello world, but this time we have pandemic, right? To go for an go. Okay, packages will take some time. Okay, now we have choice, meaning uh, we have only 20 minutes left. So either we can uh, look at all the steps uh, in the uh, schedule one more session for this, or I can show you the completed application because we will not be able to go through all the each individual current action for the Angular. Or I can show you the final code and I can share you the code also. Uh, so which approach, which option do you prefer? Do part two or uh, okay, so uh, today we have focused more on the API side. I hope everyone is. Uh, uh, yes, Shabaz, I will share the code. Uh, I will put it on GitHub uh, for you too. Uh, yes, so what I will do is uh, let me open the completed application and just go through this. Uh, go through. Um, let me. Go to the final application. Let me turn that application with the actual application. Oh, oh. Let me assign it. Let me take this as the URL. So you will take the base URL of the API. You will go to the. Okay, many people are saying part two. We will schedule that part two sometime. Uh, in the meantime, let me show you the complete application. We'll go to the service. I have a URL of the API here. I will paste it here and I will say npm start. By the time it the application is started, uh, let me talk to you about the folder structure. Increase the font size. So yes, sure, I am recording the session. Okay, let me talk about the folder structure first. So, 
if you look at the folder structure, uh, I have a folder for models, uh, under which all the model classes will be created. I have services under which all the service classes uh, will be created. App module, app component are lying outside. Uh, then there is also a file called app routing. This is where you will, this is where you will write the different paths and associate them with which component should be associated with that route or the path. For example, when I navigate from one route to another route or one URL to another URL, I will have to associate that URL or the path with a specific component. So this is the file where you will define all the route items. And also when notice that while updating, I want to pass the ID of the product in the URL itself. Notice the pattern that we have to use if I want to pass the parameter. Let me close this. Okay, next uh, file services. In services, we talked about injecting the HTTP client. If you remember the diagram. So, constructor is used for injecting the dependencies, specifically here, this is a service class which is going to use HTTP client object and it has get put post method and you will pass the URL, either get this method will help us to call the get list of the product. The second one is for getting a product by specific ID. Notice the URL, in the URL itself we have to pass the ID as a parameter or I can do create a product by using post method. Notice that the second parameter is the actual product that we want to post and uh, update, delete and so on. Next, model is same as uh, what we have created in our uh, the API project, but the syntax is different. Here, the uh, variable name, or the property name is written first, colon, followed by the data type. This is how TypeScript variables are created or properties are created. Notice that there is no float or decimal. Everything is number. All types of numbers are under number. Uh, there is a class for date. String, uh, uh, string is same as string. And then I have created components, and for each component, a folder will be created for add list update. For adding, uh, a, I have created a component. When I create a component, the command that is used is ng generate component and name of the component. It creates four files. One is the TypeScript file in which you will have properties and methods. Another is spec file, spec file is for unit test cases, uh, which uh, is not in scope for this session. Uh, HTML file in which I will define the view using the actual HTML. Notice that for adding a product, I have to define a form. And also, there are, uh, notice this round bracket, round bracket is for uh, event binding. Uh, and square bracket is for attribute binding. And if I have a custom CSS, uh, then uh, I will add the custom CSS in the CSS file itself. Let me go to the actual PS file. Now, when I want to add a product, I want to create a form such that, uh, notice that there are a few uh, classes which are in injected as dependencies in the constructor. Uh, also, there is something known as uh, uh, on in it. Uh, which is an interface here. It has got ng on init hook. This, these are known as lifecycle hooks. There are basic three hooks. One is change, one is on init, init for initialization, and on destroy when the component is destroyed. So uh, maybe in the next class we can discuss about what is a lifecycle event, how it comes into picture, and so on. Uh, then in the initialization itself, I am notice that I'm creating a form with the required properties and also I am uh, adding the required validators here. These are same validators that I have applied to the model on the API side also. 
uh, I have used date file for transposition of the date. Uh, then and on then uh, user click on submit button uh, on submit method is called and I am calling the uh, required method of the service. Uh, also, we'll talk about what is unknown and why I need I need to typecast the format unknown before I typecast it to product. Uh, these are certain things which are TypeScript specific. Uh, and also, I am displaying alert whenever required. So this is the same code demo. Uh, it's taking some time for build. Uh, we'll wait for a couple of minutes to finish it up uh, and then open. Uh, this is the same demo the, uh, code uh, which I have shown at the start. Any questions here? Uh, maybe you can unmute, you can ask me questions that you have. Okay, Angular application is running. Okay, let me go to product list. Uh, since this is the first time we are calling the API, oh, uh, connection disease, maybe I have stopped today. Let me restart. And the application. Uh, any questions? Yes, of course. Uh, Angular is fully based on TypeScript. Uh, Kamesh is asking whether it's a good idea to learn TypeScript before starting with Angular. Of course, yes. There are ton of tutorials and videos on YouTube. You can watch any basic video. Uh, it is same as any other programming language, just that the syntax is different. It's actually a wrapper on uh, JavaScript, but it's a, you could call it as object-oriented JavaScript. Similarly, Angular also you can maybe uh, before we go to the next session you can uh, take a basic uh, tutorial on Angular. Uh, you can also learn more about RESTful APIs or web APIs, how to implement them. Uh, we have look only uh, I'm say five to ten percent of the API. Creating RESTful APIs, there are many more angles there. Any questions here? 